Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, Certificate Programs, Certificate in Apparel Merchandising, CAPMA, BHC 05 Basics of Apparel Industry and Entrepreneurship, Block, 4, Unit, 16, Spreadsheet. 16.0, Introduction. Every business has numerical tasks to be performed, be it related to accounts, taxes, sales or budgeting. Businesses also need graphs and charts for analysis and projections. At homes, we track our own budgets and investments. Mathematics and engineering students deal with big numbers, formulas and calculations. Almost all of us deal with tables, data and calculations in some or the other form. There are many software packages available to assist us in all these number-based functions. Electronic spreadsheet is most common of them. In this unit, we will study how we can use electronic spreadsheet to store, maintain, manage, manipulate and organize our data for budgeting, analysis and planning purposes or how we can use to it track students' performance, weather data or inventory and maintain friends list, customer list, etc. 16.1. Objectives. After going through this unit, you will be able to Learn what a spreadsheet is and how to use it Create, edit, save, preview and print workbooks Format worksheets with different settings such as margins, headers or footers Store, search, retrieve, sort and filter tabular data Manage and manipulate data using functions and formulas, and Create graphical charts and perform analysis functions 16.2. What is a spreadsheet? Spreadsheet is basically a grid consisting of horizontal rows and vertical columns. This format has traditionally been used in accounting to present bookkeeping ledgers. Electronic spreadsheet is a computer application that simulates the paper worksheet to organize data into rows and columns and stores various types of data. Each intersection of rows and columns is called a cell where the data is stored to be used in calculations within the spreadsheet. Electronic spreadsheets have lot of inbuilt features and tools such as functions, formulas, charts, and data analysis tools that make it easier to work with large amount of data. It provides ability to perform mathematical calculations quickly and has flexibility to perform quick recalculations in case of any data change. Electronic spreadsheets can be used in any area or field that works with numbers and are commonly found in the accounting, budgeting, sales forecasting financial analysis and scientific fields. It can be used to create and maintain a list, store database records, create charts or graphs, compare numerical or financial data. There are quite a few electronic spreadsheet programs available like Excel, OpenOffice Calc or Google Spreadsheets. We will consider MS Excel 3007 for our study. It comes bundled in MS Office which is an office automation tool. 16.3 Excel Basics in this section, we will cover how to start Excel, open, save and close a workbook and what different parts of Excel window stand for. 16.3.1 Starting Excel You can start MS Excel by either of the following two ways. Click on Start All Program Microsoft Office Microsoft Office Excel 2007. Double click on the MS Excel icon on the desktop, if you have one. When Excel opens, a new document, called Workbook in Excel, with default name as Book 1 is opened. For each additional workbook you open, the number increases by 1. Please note that you can open more than one workbook at a time. By default each workbook contains three worksheets. You may increase or decrease the number of worksheets in a workbook. How we do it, we will learn later in this unit. You may also start Excel by clicking on a workbook saved on your hard drive. Excel will open automatically and the workbook will be displayed in the Excel window. When you open Excel from the menu or desktop icon, the screen will look like in Figure 3.1. Figure 16.1 Microsoft Excel window. Look at the screen for table content. 16.3.2 Commands and resources in Excel window. Let us familiarize ourselves with the key commands and resources in Excel window. The Microsoft Office button. It is the button in the upper left corner of the Excel window. 
When you click on the button, it displays a menu that can be used to create a new workbook, open an existing workbook, save a workbook, print and perform many other tasks. The Quick Access Toolbar It is present next to the Microsoft Office button on the top. It provides you access to the commands you frequently use. By default following appear on the Quick Access Toolbar. Save, to save your file, you may also press keyboard button, Ctrl plus S. Undo, to roll back the action that you last took, Ctrl plus Z. Redo, to reapply the action you rolled back or to repeat an action, Ctrl plus Y. The title bar. It is next to the quick access toolbar at the top. It displays the title of the workbook on which you are currently working. By default, the first new workbook is named as Book 1. For each additional workbook you open, the number increases by 1. You may save the workbooks by any legal file name you want. The ribbon. The ribbon is the panel at the top portion of the document, right below the title bar. To begin with it has following 7 tabs. Home. It has basic commands for creating, formatting and editing the spreadsheets. It has controls for working with the clipboard, fonts, alignment. Number. Styles, cells and editing. Insert. It has commands for inserting tables, pictures, shapes, other illustrations, links, charts, header, footer, etc. Page layout. The commands here help to set the layout of the spreadsheet, apply a theme to set the overall look, set the margins, orientation, size, backgrounds, etc. Formulas. It has commands that help you use different formulas and functions. Data. Has commands to import, query, view data from external sources, sort, filter or manage data. Review, has commands to add comments, protect sheet, protect workbook, share workbook, etc. View, helps to change the display of the worksheet area. Besides these basic tabs, additional tabs appear from time to time, depending on the context we are working in. These tabs are called contextual tabs. For example, if you select a chart, a chart tool's contextual tab appears that has commands to help you design and format the chart. These contextual tabs appear in a different color to make hem easy to spot. The commands on each tab are organized into groups. Hence, a group is a collection of logically related command buttons that you can use to manage a worksheet. Commonly used features are displayed on the ribbon and additional options can be accessed through the dialog box launcher at the bottom right corner of each group. The formula bar. The formula bar is divided into three sections. Name box spreadsheet, located on the leftmost side of the formula bar, it displays the address of the current cell. Formula bar buttons, middle section of the formula bar with indented circle on the left, to increase or decrease the size of the name box and function wizard, labeled defx, on the right. When you start entering data in the cell, cancel, and enter, buttons also appear. Cell contents, right side of the formula bar displays the cell entries. The worksheet area. The worksheet area displays all the cells. It is in the cells that you enter, format or edit your data. The status bar. The status bar appears at the very bottom of the Excel window and provides such information as the sum, average, minimum, and maximum value of selected numbers. You can change what displays on the status bar by right clicking on the status bar and selecting the options you want from the customized status bar menu. You click a menu item to select it. You click it again to deselect it. A check mark next to an item means the item is selected. 16.3.3 Setting up your Excel environment. Before you begin working on your spreadsheet, you may want to set up your Excel environment and become familiar with a few key tasks such as how to maximize and minimize the ribbon, configure the quick access fuel bar, display slash hide the formula bar, change page views etc. Minimize and maximize the ribbon. Right click anywhere in the main menu. Select minimize the ribbon in the menu that appears. This will toggle the ribbon on and off. Figure. 16.2 Minimize the ribbon. Look at the screen for table content. The check mark beside Minimize the ribbon option indicates the feature is active. You may choose to use this option if you prefer not to use the ribbon, but use different menus and keyboard shortcuts. This menu also has option to show quick access toolbar below the ribbon instead of at the top. 
You can also customize quick access toolbar using the option available in this menu. Choosing this option displays the window as shown in figure 3. Add commands to quick access toolbar. Click the arrow, customize quick access toolbar, to the right of the quick access toolbar. Select the command you wish to add from the drop down menu. The command will appear in the quick access toolbar. You can also select more commands from the menu to open the screen as shown in figure 3.3. Here you can one by one add commands to the toolbar or remove commands from the toolbar to make specific features easily accessible. Figure 16.3 Customizing Quick Access Toolbar Look at the screen for table content. Display or hide the formula bar. Click the view tab of the ribbon. In the show slash hide group check slash uncheck against formula bar to show slash hide formula bar. Expand formula bar. The expand slash collapse formula bar button is present at the far right end of the formula bar. Figure 16.4 Expand formula bar button. Look at the screen for table content. Click on the button to expand or collapse the formula bar. Customize the status bar. Right click anywhere on the status bar. From the menu that appears, select the options that you want to see on the status bar. If the option is selected a check mark appears before it. In show, that view shortcuts and zoom slider options are selected. Zoom in and out. Locate the zoom bar in the bottom, right corner. Left click the slider and drag it to the left to zoom out and to the right to zoom in. Figure, 16.5, zoom in. Look at the screen for table content. You can also use the zoom group in the view tab of the ribbon to set your zoom. Change page views. Locate the page view options in the bottom, right corner. Click on an option to select it. Different page view options are. Normal, this is the default view. Page layout, this view is very helpful from printing point of view. When you select this view, you are able to see the header block, all the margins around. The worksheet. The vertical and horizontal rulers and the column and row headings also appear differently. This view shows how exactly the workbook would look like when you print it. Page break. This is view is useful to determine where the page will break when you are trying to print an Excel sheet that spans multiple pages. Figure 16.6. Page views. You can also set the page view using workbook views group in the view tab on the ribbon. Customizing the environment using Excel options. The Excel Options menu allows you to customize Excel 3007 according to your preferences. Click the Microsoft Office button. Click on Excel Options button located at the bottom of the menu. Figure, 16.7, Excel Options button. Look at the screen for table content. When you click on Excel Options button, an extensive menu will open. Using Excel Options menu, you can personalize your work environment with the mini toolbar. Live preview, color schemes, customize sort and fill sequence, auto correction setting, modify default options for new workbooks, calculation options, specify options for editing, copying, pasting formulas, calculations, and other general setting. 16.3.4 Creating a new workbook. You can create a new workbook as follows Click the Microsoft Office button, select New. The new workbook dialog box appears. Select blank workbook under blank and recent section. It will be highlighted by default. Click create. A new blank workbook appears in the Excel window. You may also use keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus N to create a new workbook. Please note that when you first open Excel, it open with a blank new workbook. If you want to create a new document from a template, explore the templates and choose one that fits your needs instead of choosing new blank workbook. 16.3.5, Opening an existing workbook. You can open an existing document in one of the following ways. Click the Microsoft Office button. Select Open. Select the required workbook in the dialog box. Or, use keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus O to select and open an existing document. Or, if you have recently used workbook then, Click the Microsoft Office button. Choose from the Recent Documents section. Or Go to Windows Explorer. Find your document. Right mouse click on the document and select Open. 
16.3.6, Saving Our Existing Document. Click the Microsoft Office button. Select Save from the menu. Or, use Keyboard Shortcut Control plus S. Or, use Save on the Quick Access Toolbar. On using any of these options, the workbook is saved in its current location with the same file name. If you are saving the workbook for the first time, then save as dialog box appears which accepts the workbook name and location where it is to be saved. Using save as option. You may use save as option as below. Click the Microsoft Office button. Select save as from the menu. The save as dialog box appears. Select the location where you wish to save the workbook. Enter the name for the workbook. Click the Save button. The Save As option can be used to Create a backup copy of the workbook by saving it at another location or by different name. Save the workbook in a format that is fully compatible with Excel 97 3003. Save the workbook as Macro Enabled or Binary Workbook. 16.3.7 Working with Multiple Workbooks Multiple workbooks can be opened simultaneously if there is such a need. To see the list of open workbooks, click on the View tab of the ribbon. Click on Switch Windows in the Window group. A drop-down list of all open workbooks is displayed. The current workbook has a check mark besides its name. You may select any workbook from the list to make it current. 16.3.8 Closing a workbook To close a workbook, Click the Microsoft Office button. Select Close from the menu. The current workbook closes. The next document in the list becomes current. If there is no other open document, then only Excel window is there. 16.3.9 Closing Microsoft Excel. Click the Microsoft Office button. A menu appears. Click Close. Excel closes. 16.4 Entering, Editing and Formatting Data. Excel treats different types of data differently. You enter all kinds of data in a cell in the worksheet. An Excel workbook can hold any number of worksheets and each worksheet is made up of more than 17 billion cells. Each cell can hold any of the following three types of data. A numeric value, it can be numbers, example 300.40, dates, example the 4th of February 2011, or times, example 3.35 am. There are many different format options available in Excel for the display of numerical values. Text, text in Excel can be used as labels for values, headings for columns or worksheet or for any kind of instructions. Text that begins with a number is still considered as text. A formula, formulas can be entered in a cell where eventually the result of the formula is displayed. We will study more about formulas later in this unit. A worksheet can also hold charts, diagrams, pictures and other objects. These objects aren't contained in cells. Rather, they reside on the worksheet's draw layer, which is an invisible layer on top of each worksheet. In order to enter or edit data in a cell, that cell must be current. Excel indicates that a cell is current in following ways. A dark black border, called the cell cursor, appears around the cell. The cell address appears in the name box of the formula bar. A cell address is combination of column letters and row number that intersect at that cell. Position. For example, if the cell address is A3, it means it is at the intersection of column A and row 3. The cell column heading, letters, and row heading, number, is shaded for that spreadsheet. Particular cell. 16.4.1, moving around the worksheet. Excel has many ways to move the cell cursor around the worksheet to the cell where you want to enter new data or edit existing data. Click the desired cell, provided the cell is displayed within the visible section of the worksheet area. In case, cell is not visible, then you may use horizontal or vertical scroll bars to move to that part of the worksheet that contains the desired cell. Press F5 to open the Go to dialog box. Type the cell address in the reference and press enter or click OK. The cell cursor moves to the desired address. Press Ctrl plus G. This again opens go to dialog box. Click in the name box of formula bar and enter the address of the desired cell. Press enter. The cursor moves to the specified cell. You can also use the arrow and tab keys as specified below to move the cell cursor to the desired cell.
to move and keys to press. One cell on right press tab or right arrow key. One cell on left press shift plus tab or left arrow key. One cell up press up arrow key. One cell down press down arrow key. To cell A1 press control plus home. To last cell with any data, last column and last row, press control plus end. Up or down one screen press page up or page DN first cell of the current row press home. 16.4.2 Selecting cells, rows or columns. If you wish to perform a function on a group of cells, you must first select those cells by highlighting them. 16.4.2.1 Selecting cells. You can either use a mouse or a keyboard to select the desired group of cells. Using keyboard to select cell A1 to C5 dash. Go to cell A1. Press F8. This anchors the cursor and extend selection is displayed in the status bar. Use arrow keys to select the desired cell area. Press escape, escape, to come out of the extend mode. Using mouse, to select cells A1 to C5, as shown in figure 8 dash. Click on cell A1. Keep the left mouse key pressed and drag the mouse to C5. Figure. 16.8 Non-contiguous selected cells Look at the screen for table content. You can also select non-contiguous area of the worksheet using mouse. Press Ctrl key along with the left mouse key while dragging to select the cells. To select a particular row or a column, just click on that particular row or column heading. For example, if you want to select row number 3, then just click on number 3 in the row heading and the entire row will be highlighted. When you take the cursor over the row heading, then it changes to a right arrow. Similarly, when you take the cursor over the column heading, then it changed to a down arrow. 16.4.3 Entering Data There are different ways to enter data in Excel, in an active cell or in the formula bar. To enter data in an active cell, click in the cell where you want the data. Begin typing. Note that the text appears in formula bar also. To enter data into the formula bar, click the cell where you would like the data. Place the cursor in the formula bar. Type in the data in the formula bar. Please note that you can use Alt plus Enter to go to next line within a cell. Alt plus Enter in a cell works similar to Enter key in a Word document. 16.4.4 Deleting data. Select the cells. Press the delete key to delete the entire contents of a cells. Or Double click in a cell. The insertion point appears in the cell. Press backspace to delete one character at a time. Press enter to confirm changes. You can also make changes to undelete text from the formula bar. Just select the cell and place your insertion point in the formula bar and use backspace or select the whole text and use delete. 16.4.5 Editing data. To change entire contents of a cell. Select the cell and start typing the new data. Press enter to confirm the change to modify a part of the cell. Select the cell and switch to edit mode. You can switch to edit mode by following ways. Press F3 once you have selected the cell. The status changes to edit from ready in the status bar. Or double click in the cell to switch to edit mode. Once you have made your changes, press enter to confirm changes or press escape to cancel changes. You can also make changes in the formula bar. Select cell. Click in the formula bar. Make the required changes. Press enter to confirm or press escape to cancel. Changes. 16.4.6 Working with cells, rows, and columns. Copy slash cut and paste. If you need to duplicate data in some cells, you can use copy and paste option. In case you need to move the data from one cell to another. Then you use cut and paste option to copy data. Select the cells that you wish to copy. This is the source location. On the clipboard group of the home tab, click copy or use control plus C or select copy option from menu that appears when you right mouse click on the selected cells. The border of the selected cells will change appearance and the data from the selected cells is copied onto the clipboard. To cut data, select the cells that you wish to cut. This is the source location. On the clipboard group of the home tab, click cut or use control plus X or select cut option from menu that appears when you right mouse click on the selected cells. 
the border of the selected cells will change appearance and the data from the selected cells is copied onto the clipboard. To paste data. Once you have copied or cut data from the source location, you paste it to the destination location. Select the cells where you would like to paste the data. This is the destination location. On the clipboard group of the home tab, click paste or use Ctrl plus V or use right mouse click menu option. The source information will now appear in the new destination cells. If you use cut, then the information at the source location is removed automatically after the paste operation has been performed. If you use copy, then you have same information at both source and destination locations. Also, in case of copy, the copied information remains selected with changed border, even after the paste operation, until you perform next action or press escape or double click the selection to deselect it. Drag on drop. Drag and drop works similar to cut and paste that you move information from one cells to another. To drag on drop data from one point to another. Select the cells that you wish to move. Position your mouse pointer near one of the outside edges of the selected cells. The mouse pointer should change from a white, block cross to a black, thin cross with four arrows. Click and hold the mouse button and drag the cells to the new location. As you drag the selected cells, the outline of the cells will change. Release the mouse button and the information appears in the new location. Please note that for drag and drop to work, it should be enabled in Excel options. Undo and redo. Undo and redo buttons are present in the quick access toolbar. You can also use keyboard shortcuts Ctrl plus Z and Ctrl plus Y for undo and redo respectively. The undo command allows you to correct your mistakes in the worksheet. The redo button becomes active when you use undo. It lets you undo what you have undone. If you want to undo last action, then click on the undo button. You can also click the arrow key next to the undo button to open a list of previous actions. You can choose from the list to undo multiple actions at the same time. Please note that once you have saved the file and made a change to the worksheet, then you cannot undo any action performed before the save. Insert cell. You can insert a cell either above a cell or to the left of a cell. Keeping this in mind. Select the appropriate cell. Click arrow on insert command from cells group in the home tab. If you click on the insert button, a cell is inserted above the selected cell. But, if you click the arrow then a menu opens. Choose insert cells option. Insert dialog box opens. Choose the appropriate option. Or, select the appropriate cell. Right mouse click on the cell. A menu opens. Select insert. Option from the menu. Insert dialog box opens. Choose the appropriate option. Insert row or column. You can insert a row above a particular row or a column to the left of a particular column. While keeping this in mind. Select a cell in the appropriate row slash column. Either use right mouse click or insert command in cells group of the home tab on the ribbon, as done to insert a cell above. In the insert dialog box choose the appropriate option for row slash column. Or, press right mouse button on the row number, above which you want to insert a row, in row heading on left of the worksheet or press right mouse button. On the column a letter in column heading, left of which you want to insert the column, at the top of the worksheet. A menu opens. Choose insert option from the menu. A row is added above the selected row or a column is added to the left of the selected column. Delete cell, row or column. To delete cells, rows, and columns. Place the cursor in the cell, row, or column that you want to delete. Click the delete button on the cells group of the home tab. Click the appropriate choice, cell, row, or column. Or, Use right mouse click on the cell, row number and row heading or column letters in column heading. Choose delete option from the menu. Modify column width. There are various ways that you can use to modify column width. Position the cursor over the column line, line that divides the two columns, in the column heading. A horizontal double arrow will appear. Click the mouse and drag the cursor to the right to increase the column width or to the left to decrease the column width. Release the mouse button or click the column heading of a column you wish to modify. The entire column will be highlighted. Click the format command in the cells group on the home tab. A menu will appear. 
Select column width to enter a specific column measurement. Or Select auto fit column width to automatically adjust the column so all the text will fit. Or Right mouse click the column heading. A menu will appear. Select column width. From the menu, enter the specific column measurement. Modify row height. There are multiple ways that you can use to modify row height. Position the cursor over the row line, line that divides the two rows, in the row heading for the row you want to modify. A vertical double arrow will appear. Click the mouse and drag the cursor upward to decrease the row height or downward to increase the row height. Release the mouse button. Or click the row heading of arrow you wish to modify. The entire row will be highlighted. Click the format command in the cells group on the home tab. A menu will appear. Select row height to enter a specific row measurement or select auto fit row height to automatically adjust the column so all the text will fit. Or Right mouse click the row heading. A menu will appear. Select row height. From the menu, enter the specific row measurement. Hide or unhide rows or columns. To hide or unhide rows or columns. Select the row or column you wish to hide or unhide. Click the format button on the cells group of the home tab. A menu appears. Under visibility heading, click on hide and unhide option. Choose the appropriate option from submenu that appears, hide rows or hide columns or unhide rows or unhide columns as per the requirements. 16.4.7, Data and Formatting Autofill Autofill feature fills cell data or series of data in the worksheet into a selected range of cells. If you want the same data copied into the other cells, you only need to enter data in one cell. If you want to have a series of data, for example, Serial number, fill in the first two cells in the series and then use the autofill feature. To use the autofill feature, enter the required data in the cell. For example, if you wish to enter 1 in all cells from A1 to A10, then just type 1 in cell A1. Similarly, if you wish to enter numbers 1 to 10 in cells A1 to A10, then enter 1 in A1 and 3 in A3. Now select the cells with values, just A1 or both A1 and A3 depending on the case bring your cursor at the bottom right corner of the selection so that it changes from large white cross to a small, thin, black cross. Now the cursor is positioned over the fill handle. Click your mouse at the fill handle and drag it till all the cells you want to fill are selected, till A10 in our example. Release the mouse button and all the selected cells are automatically filled. You can use the fill handle to fill cells horizontally or vertically aligning values. In Excel, the data in a cell can be aligned both horizontally and vertically. The default horizontal alignment is left for the text data and right for the numerical data. Vertically, both text and numerical data are bottom aligned. You can change the default alignments as per your requirement. The steps to change alignment are Select the cells for which alignment needs to be changed. Choose horizontal slash vertical alignment command from the alignment group in the home tab. In the figure, 3.9, you can see the how the data can be positioned in a cell by choosing the appropriate combination of horizontal and vertical alignment values. Figure minus 16.9, horizontal and vertical alignments. Look at the screen for table content. Wrap text. Wrap text command enable multiple text line inside a single cell. When you type text that is too long to fit in the cell, either the text is not displayed completely or it overlaps the next cell if it is empty. If you do not want it to overlap the next cell, you can wrap the text. Figure 16.10 Text Wrapping Look at the screen for table content. Select the cells where you wish to wrap the text. Click on Wrap Text command from Alignment Group in Home tab. The text would change to multi-line text. Set the column width and row height as needed. Merge cells. Sometimes, you may want to center a piece of text over several columns or rows. This is especially the case when you want to give a title to a section of your worksheet. This can be done through merging the cells, shown in figure 3.11. Select the cell you want to merge. In our example in figure 3.11, we have merged cells A1 to E1 for the title student marks. Click Merge and Center command in Alignment Group of Home tab. 
the selected cell will be merged together to become one cell. The cell address now will be A1. Figure 16.11 Data and Cell Formatting Look at the screen for table content. In Figure 3.11, we have also merged cells G5 to I6 for the note. To do this, again, select the cells. Click the arrow for Merge and Center command. The menu opens. Choose Merge Cells option from the menu. In case, you want to unmerge the merged cell for any reason. Select the merged cell. Click the arrow for Merge and Center command. The menu opens. Choose Unmerge Cells option from the menu. The cells will be unmerged. Format data as bold, italicized, underlined or double underlined. The data in the spreadsheet can be formatted to make it more presentable. For formatting, select the cells. Either click the appropriate commands, bold, italic, underline, double underline, in font group of the home tab or use keyboard shortcuts as below. Command and keyboard shortcut. Bold, Ctrl plus B. Italicize, Ctrl plus I. Underline, Ctrl plus U. For double underline format, click the down arrow next to underline command. Choose double underline from the menu that opens. In our example in figure 11, the headings are in bold and note is in italics. Change font style. To change the font style, select the cells. Click the drop down arrow next to the font style box on the home tab. Select a font style from the list. As you move over the font list, the live preview feature previews the font for you in the spreadsheet. Change the font size. To change the font size, select the cells you want to format. Click the drop down arrow next to the font size box on the home tab. Select a font size from the list. Change the text color. To change the text color, select the cells you want to format. Click the drop down arrow next to the font color command. A color palette will appear. Select a color from the palette. Or select more colors. A dialog box will appear. Select a color. Click OK. Add a border. To add borders, select the cell or cells you want to format. Click the drop down arrow next to the borders command on the home tab. A menu will appear with border options. Click an option from the list to select it. You can change the line style and color of the border. In figure 3.11, we have added thick border to the title and borders to the table, column heading and the note. Add a fill color. To change the text color, select the cell or cells you want to format. Click the fill command. A color palette will appear. Select a color. Or select more colors. A dialog box will appear. Select a color. Click OK. You can use the fill color feature to format columns and rows, and format a worksheet so that it is easier to read. Format numbers, dates, and times. Excel treats states and times as special type of numeric value. You can format any of these data as per your requirements. Select the cells you wish to format. Click the drop down arrow next to the number format box in number group in home tab. Select one of the options for formatting numbers. Figure 16.12 Number group in home tab. By default, the numbers appear in the general category, which means there is no special formatting. In the number group, you have some other options. For example, you can change another currency format, set numbers to percents, add commas, and change the decimal location. When you click on the dialog box launcher, arrow at the bottom right corner of the group, the number tab of the format cells dialog box opens as in figure 3.13. From here you can choose the specific format for number, date or time. Figure 16.13 Number tab of format cells dialog box. Look at the screen. Please note, for any of the above formatting options, you can also right mouse click in the selected cells and then choose format cells. Option from the menu that opens. The format cells dialog box will appear with different tabs for number formatting, alignment, font, border, fill and protection. You can also use Format Painter in Clipboard Group of Home tab to copy format from one cell to another. 16.5 Formulas and Functions Formulas and functions enhance Excel's capability calculating and manipulating data for analytical purposes. 3.5.1 
Formulas A formula is a set of mathematical instructions that can be used to perform calculations. Formulas are started in the formula box with an equals sign. A formula may consist of operators, symbols, plus, slash, etc., that specify the calculation to be performed. References, the cell or range of cells that you want to use in your calculation. Constants, numbers or text values that do not change. Functions, predefined formulas in Excel. You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learn Agnu. 16.5.1.1 Create a simple formula spreadsheet. We will learn to create a formula to add two numbers. Click the cell where you want the formula to be defined, for example cell A3. Type equals sign to let Excel know that a formula is being defined. Type the two numbers to be added with the operator. For example type 35 plus 1330 in cell A3, after equals sign. Press enter. The result of the above addition operation is displayed in the cell A3, instead of the formula that we had typed. If you select A3, the formula appears in the formula bar. We can now modify the above formula to add contents of two cells instead of the constant values. Click the cell where you want the formula to be defined and the answer will appear, for example cell A3. Type equals sign to let Excel know that a formula is being defined. Type the cell number, example A1, that contains the first number to be added. Then type plus operator and then the cell number, example A3, that contains the second number to be added. For example type A1 plus A3 in cell A3, after equals sign. Please note, if a cell does not contain a number then it is treated as containing 0. Press enter. The result of the above addition operation is displayed in the cell A3. Cell A3 will display the value 333. Change the value in cell A1 to 300, and notice that the value in cell A3 automatically changes to 334. 16.5.1.2 Create a simple formula using point and click method. To create a formula using mouse, click the cell where the answer will appear, B3, for example. Type the equal sign, equals. Click on the first cell to be included in the formula, B1, for example. Type the operator sign, plus for addition or, for subtraction or for multiplication or, for division. Click on the next cell in the formula, B3, for example. Press enter or click enter button on the formula bar. 16.5.2 Using cell references. When a cell address is used as part of a formula, it is called a cell reference because instead of entering specific numbers into a formula, the cell address referring to a specific cell is being used. You have used fill handle in the autofill feature in section 3.4.7. The same feature can be used to copy formulas from one cell to another. For example, if you have the formula equals A1 plus B1 in cell C1, and you can use the fill handle to fill the formula into cell C3. Note that the formula won't appear the same in C3 as it does in C1. Instead of equals A1 plus B1, you will see equals A3 plus B3 in cell C3. This is called relative reference where cell references in formulas has changed cell addresses relative to the row and column they are moved to. In relative reference, formulas automatically adjust to new locations when they are pasted into different cells. Sometimes, our requirement is such that we don't want this change of cell address on pasting. To achieve this, cells must be addressed by absolute reference. In absolute cell references, a formula always refers to the same cell or cell range used in it. If a formula is copied to a different location, then the cell address remains the same. An absolute reference is designated in the formula by the addition of a dollar sign, dollar. It can precede the column reference or the row reference, or both. Examples of absolute referencing are Australian dollar, here the column will not change when copied. One Australian dollar, here the row will not change when copied. Dollar one Australian dollar, here both row and column will not change when copied. In the above example, if we have formula as equals dollar odd one plus dollar one Bahamian dollar in cell C1 and we copy this formula in cell C3, then you will still see equals dollar odd one plus dollar one Bahamian dollar in cell C3. 16.5.3 Linking Worksheets 
Sometimes, you may want to use the value from a cell in another worksheet within the same workbook in a formula. For example, the value of cell A1 in the current worksheet and cell A3 in the second worksheet can be added using the format sheet name. Cell address. The formula for this example would be equals A1 plus sheet 3 exclamation mark A3 where the value of cell A1 in the current worksheet is added to the value of cell A3 in the worksheet named sheet 3. 16.5.4 Functions A function is a built-in predefined formula in Excel. One of the key benefits of functions is that they save your time since you do not have to write the formula yourself. For example, you could use an Excel function called average to quickly find the average of a range of numbers. Excel has hundreds of different functions to assist with your calculations. Each function has a particular syntax, which must be strictly followed for the function to work correctly. 16.5.4.1 Function Library The function library is a large group of functions on the formula tab of the ribbon. These functions include Auto sum easily calculates the sum of a range. Recently used, all recently used functions. Financial, accrued interest, cash flow return rates and additional financial functions. Logical, and, if, true, false, etc. Text, text-based functions. Date and time, functions calculated on date and time. Math and trig, mathematical functions. You can visit each of these functions in the library to know more about them. 16.5.4.2 Insert a function. To insert a function, click the cell where you want the function applied. Click the Insert Function button on the formula bar. The Insert Function dialog box opens. Choose the function from the dialog box. You may search on a particular function in the dialog box or change the category and select the function. Help. For each function is available right there in the dialog box. Click OK. Function Arguments dialog box opens. Select the cells or range of cells for function arguments and click OK. The function is added to the formula bar. 16.6 .6, Working with Worksheets In this section we will learn to name, add, delete, group or ungroup worksheets. We will also learn to format a worksheet for printing. 16.6.1 Name a worksheet. The default names of worksheets are Sheet 1, Sheet 3, and Sheet 3. Since these names are not useful and descriptive, we will learn to rename the worksheet. You can rename a worksheet using any of the following ways. Right mouse click on the Sheet 1 tab. Menu appears as shown in Figure 14a. Select option Rename. The name Sheet 1 is highlighted by a black box and becomes editable. Type the new name at the tab. Press enter. The worksheet is renamed. Or. Click the format command of the cells group in home tab. A menu appears as shown is figure 14b. Select option rename sheet under organize sheet. The sheet name is highlighted by a black box and becomes editable. Type the new name at the tab. Press enter. The worksheet is renamed. Figure 16.14 Renaming a worksheet. Look at the screen for table content. 16.6.2 .6 Insert a new worksheet. You can add worksheets to the workbook anytime you want. The new sheets added will be named as Sheet 4 and so on. There are many ways that you can add a new worksheet. Click on the Insert Worksheet icon near the Worksheet tabs or press Shift plus F11. A new worksheet after the last tab will be added. Or Right mouse click on the Worksheet tab. Choose Insert. From the menu, shown in Figure 14a, Insert dialog box opens. Select Worksheet. Click OK. A new worksheet before the selected tab will be added. Or, click the down arrow of Spreadsheet Insert command in the Cells group of Home tab. A menu appears. Choose Insert Sheet from the menu. A new worksheet before the selected worksheet will be added. 16.6.3 .6 Delete a worksheet. Any number of worksheets can be deleted irrespective of the fact that they contain any data or not. But, there should be at least one worksheet in the workbook. To delete a worksheet, right mouse click on the Worksheet tab. Choose Delete from the menu, shown in Figure 14a. The selected worksheet is deleted. Or, 
click the down arrow of delete command in the cells group of home tab. A menu appears. Choose delete sheet from the menu. The selected worksheet is deleted. 16.6.4 Grouping Worksheets If the multiple worksheets of a workbook contain identical formula and formatting, then you can group them together. When the worksheets are grouped together, then any change made to one worksheet will be applied to all other worksheets in the group. You can group both contiguous and non-contiguous worksheets. To group contiguous worksheets, click on the first worksheet tab. Press the Shift key. While holding the Shift key, click the last worksheet tab you want in the group. Release the Shift key. All the sheets from the first sheet to the last sheet are now grouped. The tab color will now change to white indicating that they are grouped together. To group non-contiguous worksheets, click on the first worksheet tab. Press the Control key. While holding the Control key, select all the other worksheets you want in the group. Release the Control key. All the sheets that you selected while keeping the control key pressed would be grouped together and sheet tabs will appear white. 16.6.5 Ungrouping Worksheets To ungroup worksheets, right mouse click one of the worksheets in the group. Select Ungroup Sheets from the menu. 16.6.6 Reposition Worksheets in a Workbook To change the position of worksheets in a workbook, Click and hold the worksheet tab that is moved until an arrow appears on the left corner of the sheet. Drag the worksheet to the desired location. 16.6.7 Hide Worksheets To hide a worksheet, right-click on the tab of the sheet you wish to hide. Select Hide or click Format button. Select Hide and Unhide under Visibility in the menu. Choose Hide Sheet option to unhide a worksheet. Right click on tab of any sheet. Select Unhide. A dialog box with the list of hidden worksheets is displayed. Choose the sheet to unhide. Or click Format button. Select Hide and Unhide under Visibility in the menu. Choose Unhide Sheet. Option. A dialog box with the list of hidden worksheets is displayed. Choose the sheet to unhide. 16.6.8 Formatting and Printing the Workbook. In this section, we will learn how to set page headers, footers, margin, etc. and prepare our workbook for printing. To change page orientation, select Page Layout tab on the ribbon. Click Orientation command in the Page Setup group. Choose the orientation you want, landscape, horizontal, or portrait, vertical. To change paper size, select Page Layout tab on the ribbon. Click Size command in the Page Setup group. A drop-down menu appears with all the available paper sizes. Current size is highlighted. Choose the size option. Page size of workbook changes. To set page margins, select Page Layout tab on the ribbon. Click Margins command in the Page Setup group. Choose the predefined margins from the list. Or, customize your margins by selecting Custom Margins from the menu and entering the desired margins in the appropriate fields to set headers and footers. The header is the text that appears in the top margin of every page of the printed worksheet. Similarly, the footer is the text that appears in the bottom margin of every page of the printed worksheet. To add header and footer, select Insert tab on the ribbon. Click the Header and Footer button in the text group. A Design Context tab appears under Header and Footer Tools. And Worksheet changes to Page Layout View from the Normal View. Page Layout View structures the worksheet so that it is easy to change the format of the worksheet. Both Header and Footer are divided into three sections, Left, Center, Right. You can type in your custom header slash footer or you can use predefined headers and footers. Click on Header slash Footer button in Header and Footer group of Design Context tab to see the list of predefined headers and footers. To use Scale to Fit Scale to Fit is a useful feature that can help you format spreadsheets to fit on a page. Select the Page Layout tab. Locate the Scale to Fit group. Enter a specific height and width, or use the Percentage field to decrease the spreadsheet by a specific percent. Be careful with how small you scale the information, you should be able to read it. To define a print area. At times you may want to print just a part of the whole worksheet. In that case you need to select your print area that you need to be printed. 
to define your print area. Click and drag your mouse to select the cells you wish to print. Click the print area command in page setup group of page layout tab. Choose set print area. Now, only the selected cells will print. You can confirm this by viewing the spreadsheet in print preview. To return to printing entire worksheet, which is the default setting, click the print area command and select clear print area. To print titles on each page. Print title command allows you to select specific rows and or columns to appear on each printed sheet. This helps when the worksheet prints into many pages, since we can have row and column heading printed on each page for easy association and readability. Select the page layout tab. Click the print titles command in page setup group. The sheet tab of page setup dialog box opens. Click the icon at the end of the field rows to repeat at top. Select the row headings in the spreadsheet that you want to appear on each printed page. Repeat for the column, if required. Click OK. The select row slash column will now appear on each printed page. Preview before printing. Click Office button. Select Print Print Preview. The worksheet opens in the Print Preview mode. In Print Preview, you can access many of the same features that you can from the ribbon, through the Page Setup dialog box. However, in Print Preview you can see how the spreadsheet will appear in printed format. Click Print to print the document or close Print Preview to come back to the document in original mode. You can modify page margins, orientation, page size, etc. in Print Preview mode. To quick print the document. Click Office button. Select Print Quick Print. The document prints to the default printer. It bypasses the print dialog box. To print the document. Click Office button. Select Print Print. The print dialog box appears. Select the printer from the drop down list. Click Properties to change any necessary settings. Select the pages you would like to print, specific pages, all of the worksheet, a selected area, the active sheet, or the entire workbook. Select the number of copies. Click OK to print. 16.7 Working with tables and charts. Excel has features to help you manage and analyze related data. An Excel table stores information in a consistent manner, making it easier to format, sort, and filter worksheet data. Charts allow you to present information contained in the worksheet in a graphic format, which makes information easy to analyze. 16.7.1 Tables Typically, an Excel table has only column headings and no row headings. Once you have converted the information into a table, you can sort and filter it as per your requirements. 16.7.1.1 Create Table to create a table you need to have information stored in columns. Enter column headings for the table. Each heading should be in a different cell in arrow. Column headings are also known as field names. The column headings should appear in a single row without any blank cells between the entries. Start adding data in the row right below column heading. This is the first record slash row of the table. Select any cell that contains the data. Click on Format as Table button in the Styles group of Home tab. A gallery of predefined styles of tables appears. Choose your table style. A Format as Table dialog box appears which has the range of cells to be converted into the table. Also a marquee appears around all. The cells of the table, indicating the selection to be converted into a table. Figure, 16.15, Cell Address to Create a Table. Look at the screen for table content. The range of cell to be converted into table in figure 3.15 is for the student marks example that has been shown in figure 3.11. Select My Table Has Headers and click OK. The table created will look like as shown in figure 3.16. Figure 16.16, an Excel table. Look at the screen for table content. By default, the table will be set up with the drop-down arrows in the header so that you can sort or filter the table, if you wish. Alternatively, after you have selected cell for table creation, you can also choose the table command button in the tables group of the insert tab. This opens create table dialog box with the range of cells to be converted into the table, similar to as in figure 3.15. When you click OK. The table is created in the default style. If you want to convert an existing Excel table back to a normal range of cells, 
Select any cell in the table and then click the Convert to Range button on the Table Tools Design tab. All data and formatting is preserved. Using Table Tools Design Context tab, you can change table style, add or delete table rows, resize table, remove duplicates, change table name and perform many more other functions on the table. 16.7.1.2 Sort Data Sorting allows you to reorder your data. To sort data, select a cell in the column you want to sort. For example, you can choose a cell in total column to sort on total in our students' marks example. Click the sort and filter command in the editing group on the home tab. In the menu you can choose smallest to largest or largest to smallest order for sort. For multi-level sorting, you can also choose custom sort. And specify different columns and the order of sort for each in the dialog box. Alternatively, you can also choose sort options from the sort and filter group in the data tab. 16.7.1.3 Filter Data Filtering allows you to display only data that meets certain criteria. To filter, click the column or columns that contain the data you wish to filter. On the Home tab, click on Filter Spreadsheet button in the Sort and Filter group. Drop down arrows appear on column headings. These arrows would already be there if you are using an Excel table. Click the arrow in the column heading. Choose the appropriate data values to filter from the drop down menu. To clear the filter, click the sort and filter button and choose filter again. 16.7.2 Charts Charts allow you to present information contained in the worksheet in a graphic format. Excel offers many types of charts including column, line, pie, bar, area, scatter and more. To create a chart we first need to have the data. 16.7.2.1 Add data We will use the following sample data in our example. We will create a graph to compare daily attendance of two classes. Figure 16.17 Sample data for creating graph Look at the screen for table content. This is the source data for our chart since it will be based on this data. Any change in the source data will automatically be reflected in the chart. 16.7.2.2 Create Chart Select the cells that, that contain the data you want to use in the chart, including the column titles and the row labels. Click the Insert tab on the ribbon. Click on one of the chart options from the chart group. In this example, we will use the Columns option. Select a type of chart you want to create from the list. For our example, we will use a 3D clustered column. The chart appears in the worksheet. Also, Notice Design, Layout and Format Context tabs under Chart Tools. Design tab has commands to control the chart type, layout, styles, and location of the chart. Layout tab has commands to control pictures insert, shapes and text boxes, labels, axes, background, and analysis. Format tab has commands to modify shape styles, word styles and size of the chart. 16.7.2.3 Apply Layout. To apply the layout, click your chart. The chart tools become available. Choose the Design tab. Click the Quick Layout button in the Chart Layout group. A list of chart layouts appears. Select the layout. Excel applies the layout to your chart. We have chose Layout 9 for our example. 16.7.2.4 Add Labels. Add appropriate chart title and axis title to the chart. Click on the chart title and axis title labels and change the labels appropriately. You can also add more labels, if required. Click on Layout tab. Choose Text Box from Insert Group. Click on Text Box and place it on the chart. We have added a text box in our example to add the week, March 1 7, Figure 3.18 Figure, 16.18, 3D Clustered Column Chart for the Sample Data. Look at the screen for table content. 16.7.2.5 Switch Data Switch Data rotates the data displayed on the X and Y axes. It rotates row data to column data and vice versa. Choose the Design tab. Click the Switch Row Slash Column button in the Data group. Excel changes the data in your chart. Figure 16.19 3D chart after switch data has been applied. Look at the screen for table content. 16.7.2.6 
change chart type, chart style or data range. You can use the design context tab to change chart type, chart style or data range. Select design tab. Choose the commands as per your requirements. Click on change chart type from the type group. Select the required type from the dialog box that opens. Click select data command from the data group. You can make the required changes to the data in the dialog box that opens. You can choose any of the chart styles available in the style group. 16.7.2.7 Move the chart to a different worksheet. Select the design tab. Click the move chart command. A dialog box appears. The current location of the chart is selected. Select the desired location for the chart. The desired location can be an existing worksheet or a new sheet. 16.8 Other useful Excel features There are many other features in Excel that help us to create professional and error-free documents. Let us learn more about those features. 16.8.1 Conditional Formatting Conditional formatting allows you to quickly see differences in numbers, patterns and trends at a glance. You can highlight interesting or unusual cell values using different conditional formatting rules. To apply conditional formatting, select the cells you wish to format. Select the Home tab and locate the Styles group. Click the Conditional Formatting command. A menu will appear with your formatting options. You can choose from the predefined rules or create your own new rule. Select one of the options to apply it to the selected cells. When you choose a predefined rule, a cascading menu will appear. And an additional dialog box may appear, depending on the option you choose. Make the necessary choices, and click OK to remove conditional formatting rules. Click the conditional formatting command. Select clear rules. A cascading menu appears. Choose to clear rules from the entire worksheet or the selected cells. 16.8.2 Freeze rows and columns. To freeze rows or columns mean that those rows or columns are always visible on the screen and they never scroll. This feature is quite helpful while working with very large worksheets, where we want to see certain rows slash columns all the time, for example labels or headings, to be able to relate and analyze data. To freeze row or column. Select the row below the one you want to freeze and select the column right of one you want to freeze. For example, if you want to freeze row 3, then select row 3 and if you want to freeze column B, then choose column C. If you want to freeze both row and column, then choose the correct cell. Click on View tab on the ribbon. Click in Freeze Panes command in the window group. Select Freeze Panes from the menu. A thin black line appears below the frozen row and right of frozen column. To unfreeze the panes, select Unfreeze Panes option from the menu that appears. When you click Freeze Panes command in the window group of the View tab, 16.8.3, Find and Replace. To find data or find and replace data, click the Find and Select button on the Editing group of the Home tab. Choose Find or Replace tab in the dialog box. Complete the Find What text box. Click on Options for more search options. Use the button Replace All, Replace, Find All, Find Next as per the requirements. 16.8.4 Add Comments Comments are basically notes that can be inserted into any cell in Excel. Comments can be used to explain formulas, cells, and other data in the spreadsheet itself. To add a comment in the Excel worksheet. Select the cell where you want to add the comment. Click on Review tab on the ribbon. Select New Comment in the Comments group. Or, right-click the cell to which you want to add a comment. Select Insert Comment from the menu. The comment box appears near the selected cell, displaying the username. Type your comments in the box. When finished, click any other cell. A red triangle appears on the upper right corner of the cell, indicating a comment has been attached. When you place your mouse over the cell, the comment appears. Figure 16.20 Comment on the total column in Student Marks Worksheet. Look at the screen for table content. In our example of Student's Marks in Figure 3.18. Notice a small triangle on top right corner of total column indicating there is a comment associated with it. 
16.8.5 Protect Worksheet You can protect your worksheet from being modified or changed by somebody else by using Cell Lock and Protect Worksheet feature. The Protect Sheet option is effective only for the locked cells of the spreadsheet. Inversely, Cell Locking doesn't take effect until you protect your worksheet. Hence, Cell Lock and Protect Worksheet work in complement with each other. By default, all the cells of the Excel spreadsheet are locked. Hence, it gets very simple to protect all the data in a single worksheet just by applying the Protect Sheet option. Unlocking specific cells permits changes to be made to these cells after the Protect Sheet option has been applied. Unlock cells. Cells in a worksheet are locked by default. We will unlock some of them. Click on the Home tab. Choose the Format option in Cells group to open the drop down list. Click on Lock Cell option at the bottom of the list, under Protection. The lock cell option works like an on slash off button. Since all cells are initially locked in the worksheet, clicking on the option has the effect of unlocking the highlighted cells. If you click on lock cell option again, it will lock the selected cells. Protect worksheet. Once the cells have been locked, we will protect the worksheet. Click on the home tab. Choose the format option in cells group to open the drop down list. Click on protect sheet option at the bottom of the list, under Protection, to open the Protect Sheet dialog box. Provide the password if you want to. Password does not prevent users from opening and viewing the worksheet. Choose the other options according to your requirements. Click OK. Now you can access only unlocked cells on the worksheet. 16.8.6 Convert text to columns. Sometimes you might need to split data in one cell into two or more cells. For example, when both first and last names in a worksheet are stored in one cell, but they are required separately, then you can do this easily by utilizing the convert text to columns wizard. Depending on your data, you can split the cell content based on a delimiter, such as a space or a comma, or based on a specific column break location within your data. To use this wizard, Highlight the column in which you wish to split the data. Click the Text to Columns button in Data Tools group on the Data tab. Click Delimited if you have a comma or tab separating the data, or click Fixed Widths to set the data separation at a specific size. Click Next. In the next screen you either choose the delimiter, for delimited data, or specify the location where to break the data, for fixed width data. Click Next. In the next screen. Specify data format and the destination columns for the separated data. Click Finish. Data is separated. 16.9 Summary Spreadsheets enable working with data easy and effective. It has ability to store, manipulate, format, sort, filter, retrieve, organize, represent and analyze data as per your requirements.